Hi everybody, we're going to go over using GeoDribba, a really powerful and free tool that you can download off of GeoDribba.org. So when you open up GeoDribba, you see that you have a, a line of menus at the top, uh, an intimidating punch of tools that you'll become familiar with later on, uh, this side view right here, which we call the algebra view, this main view here, which is your workspace, and an input bar on the bottom which you don't have to worry about right now. The first thing that I like to do when I open GeoGebra is get acquainted with my workspace and move it around and change it however I feel comfortable using this. The way I do that is selecting this last tool over here. And this last tool allows me to drag around my workspace. So just by left clicking and dragging I can move around and I can basically move to any point in the canvas that I want to. So I'm just actually leave it the way it started right around here and I'm also have to show you how to deal with the axes that you see and this dotted grid. There are two ways that you can either hide or show the axes and grid. One you can just right click anywhere on the workspace that you have and I can click axes to hide the axes and I can click grid to hide the grid. To bring them back you do the exact same thing. Click right click, click on axes and right click click on grid. The same thing can be done from view using these two guys over here. So nothing too mind-boggling yet. So now I have this workspace, I have this grid, and the first thing that I want to do in terms of creating something, and probably the first thing that you need to do when creating any kind of simulation in GeoGebra, create a point. Your point tool is located right here. So I'm going to click on that. I'm going to make some points. I'm going to make four points. Um, and Watch me very carefully as I make these four points. I'm going to create point A, B, C right here, and D right there at the origin. Now if you notice, A and B are bright blue. C and D are a different color. C is actually a dim grayish blue and D is almost black. The difference between A and B compared to C and D are that A and B are what are called free objects. C and D are what are called dependent objects. I'll get into more of this in just a minute. What I need you to do is click back on this first tool here which allows me to move around objects or you can press escape. So now having this tool selected what a free object means is that I can left click and drag this guy around anywhere I want. No matter where I decide to put it, I can put it there. It's free in terms of just that. It's free. You can put it anywhere you want. And its definition doesn't depend on anything. The same thing goes for B. You can drag it anywhere I want. However, C, I clicked it on the x-axis, so it depends on the x-axis and it must lie on the x-axis always. Uh, in this term, it's dependent, and because its construction defines it as it's a point on the x-axis, and that's why it's a different color. But there is some degree of freedom that I can drag it around. I just can drag it up and down. D, on the other hand, is what's known as a fully dependent object. It's defined as both on the x-axis and the y-axis. So if I take this and try to drag it around, there's no way it's going anywhere. Um, so that's the kind of difference between um, free objects and the two different kinds of dependent objects, whether it's semi-dependent or fully dependent, where you can't drag it around at all. So now we have a bunch of points. What do we want to do with those bunch of points? Well, let's create some lines. In order to do that, let's select the line tool right here. The line tool is the third tool on your toolbar, and you just want to left click on it. And it says select two points. Awesome. Let's select A and B. Let's also select B and C. So very quickly I created two lines um, and there are lines little a and little b. I don't like those names because it's going to get a little bit confusing. So let's go back to our select tool for objects, this first guy, either click or press escape, and let's rename them. An easy way to rename them 
is either hovering over A, you can see that the line changes color, you can right click and I can click either rename or object properties. Personally, I like clicking on object properties. It pops up a nice little window and it says, hey, the name right here. Let's change it to line, oops, line one. Another way of changing an object, uh, an object's name, is hovering over this part. See, I just selected line B. So I can right click on that, go to object properties, and up, up pops the same window. And let's rename this line two. So now I've renamed those two lines from line little a and line little b to line one and line two. Now let's see what happens if I drag around the points A, B, and C. If I drag point B around, notice that line 2 and line 1 both change. The reason being that line 2 and line 1 both depend on point B, meaning that they were defined by point B. If point B changes, then the line changes. As you can see, they're going crazy. Now, if I choose to move around point A, notice that line 2 doesn't care because line 2 is only defined through points B and C and it has no definition or or it doesn't care on A about A and what A happens to A. So um, if I move C you can predict that hey well does line 1 have anything to do with C? No, we never defined line 1 in terms of C so I can move around C and the only thing that matters is uh, and changes is line 2. So that's the kind of relationship that happens between points uh, which you create and objects that you create such as lines. Um, it's a little bit confusing at first and rightfully so. Um, it takes a little practice so I encourage you to do this on your own and experiment on your own and just work with renaming objects and doing those sorts of things. So. Um, when you've got to this point in, your sim in creating your simulation or game or whatever you're doing in the classroom, it's always good to simplify the way it looks. For a lot of things can distract your students. So what I'm going to show you how to do is hide objects and hide labels. So first of all, the grid and the axes are making me dizzy. So let's get rid of them. So we got rid of both. Let's take A, B, and C, and I don't really need to know that there are points A, B, and C. All I need to know is that there are points on something. So what I can do is I can hover over A, right click, and click show label. And the label disappears, and the object stays there. Similarly, if I look at B, I can go over here, B in the algebra view, right click, and remove that label. And I can do the exact same thing for C very quickly. So I remove the labels, a little bit less things to look at and distract me. Same thing I can do for lines. Right click on the line and unclick show label. That simple. Uh, now let's say um, I don't need this D over here. Um, I don't want to delete it, which we're going to get into later, but I want to hide it. All I have to do is right click that and right click on show object and it disappears. And see D is still very much here, it's just not shown. If I want to reshow it, all I have to do is click on this little blank box and it shows it again. And I can click that and then I can actually click on anything and I can hide these points as I choose fit. Um, so now, uh, how to get rid of objects? Well, in order to get rid of an object, I can hover over it, right click, and press delete. I can hover over it, select it directly by left click, you can see it's still highlighted, and press delete on my keyboard, or I can select it here inside the algebra view and press delete, or right click on it and click delete. So those are the basic ways to get around GeoGebra. I hope that helped you, uh, and I encourage you to, again to practice and fiddle with it, uh, because you only get better with more exposures to using this program. Uh, thank you for listening, and look forward to more tutorials on using GeoGebra in the future. Bye.